Welcome back, Grill Sergeant here. Today, let's talk about July 4th barbecue. With Independence Day right around the corner, that is your day to shine as a pit master. Now, I love King of the Hill, but propane sucks when you compare it to grilling with charcoal. Hit that thumbs up button if you already cook with charcoal and know what I'm talking about. Whether you've always been grilling on a Weber or you just got one, these three techniques will step your barbecue game up. All right, let's rock and roll and let's start the show. All right, before we start with the three techniques, let's go over some very helpful equipment. First thing is a charcoal chimney starter. This is where you'd basically put your charcoal inside and this thing will get your charcoal screaming hot. Now I know some of you could say, well just pour some lighter fluid on it. No, just no. Don't even think about lighter fluid. You're not using propane to get away from these off flavors, chemical taste. Why would you spray lighter fluid on? No, get yourself one of these and light it up. Second thing is get yourself a temperature thermometer. This is food safety, folks. You do not want to over or undercook your food. Now you could go with the probe kind or you could go with a wireless thermometer. Now, if you're interested in getting one of these, click on this link right here and that will take you to a video where I show you how to use one of these things. This is definitely a game changer. Next, get yourself a pair of heavy duty gloves. They'll come in handy when you're moving around hot charcoal baskets. Lastly, Let's talk about wood. Wood is the secret ingredient with charcoal cooking that's really gonna make your food stand out. Now, there are different types of wood for what you're cooking on, and so you can also experiment. So usually on the back of the bag, it will say, oh, for this, use it for pork. Oh, for this, use it for beef. But you know, experiment what works for you. Sometimes when you look at competition grillers, you're going to see them use a variety of wood. So, you know, experiment and have fun with it. All right, kettle technique number one, the reverse sear. Now with the reverse sear, you can pretty much do anything. But when I go to the butcher and I get a two, three inch thick cut steak, the reverse sear is the way to go. Once your charcoal is ready from the chimney, use the char baskets and fill them up on one side of the grill. If you don't have char baskets, no worries, just dump your charcoal to one side and throw your meat on the other side apart from the coals. The steak will be cooking around 350 degrees indirectly. When your steak reaches around 90 degrees, flip it and bring it within 10 to 15 degrees of how you want your steak to come out. Once it hits that temperature, drag the steak directly over the coals and cook each side for one minute. Pull it off and let it rest for eight to 10 minutes. Letting it rest will continue to cook the steak until it hits the temperature you were aiming for. After that, enjoy your thick cut steak. All right, technique number two, and this one is kind of my personal favorite, the snake method. To cook ribs, if you're doing like the three, two, one method, they need to be at around 250 degrees. So then I found out about the snake method. How you do the snake method is you basically, you have your briquettes here and you're going to stack them on one side of the grill and it's basically going to do an even burn throughout. So once it starts here, by the time it gets to here, that's gonna be a six hour cook. So what I'm gonna do is just start stacking the bri briquettes right now. So then take about eight of these and then put them in a, a charcoal chimney. And that's basically what's going to be lit here. So another trick you can do with your snake method is you can basically place smoking chips along the way. So as it burns this way, it will then pick up the, the schmook. And you don't want to place them too close together because you don't want the snake jumping ahead. So you do want to, you do want to space them out. But that should be, that should be good. And so you would think like, okay, why don't you put um, chips all the way down? But from about this section to this section, um, their their ribs are going to be wrapped in foil. So it's really not necessary to have wood all the way through. Also, one thing to point out when cooking ribs, when you have the snake method, is vent settings are very crucial. 
You basically have full open, which is going to allow the most airflow through. But for your top and bottom vents, you're basically going to want to have the bottom and the top open probably about 25%. This setup will get you about 250 degrees for about seven hours. After your ribs are done, take them off and enjoy them. Kettle technique number three, the vortex method. If you're a fan of wings, this technique is for you. This was once a five quart stainless steel bowl that I got at Walmart for, who knows, maybe seven bucks. What you do is you cut the bottom off of it, flip it over and fill it up. Now place wings in a circle around the bowl. After 45 minutes, flip the wings and continue cooking. Right before you pull the wings, you can place them over the vortex to give the wings a nice char texture. All right, well, that's it for the three techniques. Hopefully this July 4th, you will have an awesome barbecue. All right, I have a bonus tip for you. Reuse your charcoal. After your cook, you have your top and bottom vents. Shut them off completely. The charcoal inside will basically come to a stop. Whatever is left over when you go to cook again, you can put that at the bottom of your charcoal chimney and then throw fresh charcoal on top. The chimney will actually light faster with the charcoal that you had previously used because it's going to heat up quicker. Well, thanks for watching. Again, if you like what you saw today, please like my channel, like this video, and hit that notification button. See you next time. Cheers.